done it. New year, new me. New set, new times, new Roman. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, this is going to be the set. And I didn't put a mic on. Hang on. New year, same me, I guess. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Have you never been here before? Well, this isn't new to you then. But it's... It's so... Cool. I finally made headway on my setup. And then I realized it's kind of dumb because we're not as intimate here as we used to be in my old house. So I'm going to figure something out. There's more that's going to go here soon. Surprises. But we'll do a desk tour at the end of this video. So if you're interested in that, it'll be at the end of this video, like I said. I hope you're ready for today because it's a big one. The video is a big one. Is it? I don't know. It sounded like a good way to intro a video. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. So today... I'm gonna do a video. Great start. I did a poll here on my community tab, which is where I like to do polls because I feel like Twitter is a little too, I don't know, full of fuckery. But I feel like if you're here and you're on my community tab and you, you're actually gonna tell me what you think about the things. So, um, I did a poll asking how you guys felt about multi-subject videos, um, and if you didn't vote in the poll, how do you think Trump happened? You can tell it's been a minute since I filmed the video because, well, A, my hair is dirty as shit, but also the roots are playing this show, and also the red has almost completely faded out of my hair. It looks more vibrant on camera than it does in real life. Anyway, this is going to be a multi-subject video. I wanted to make a video about a few things, but I didn't feel like they required a full fleshed out video, so I wanted to combine them. And I feel like I get this urge every once in a while, and then I'm like, eh, I feel like people don't want to watch multi-subject videos from me personally, especially because my titles are so specific to the person who I am, uh, speaking about so this is just gonna be a running series on my channel now and then we're gonna call it the dump every once in a while you'll get an episode of the dump in which I will dump upon you things that I want to talk about. It's literally minus five degrees outside with a real feel of minus 14 in case you were wondering. It's winter. Let's crack open our MacBook, close the porn we were watching and talk about some stuff. Whoa, what the fuck is this? It's so funny to fall asleep to things on YouTube and then you wake up and you're watching something completely different to what you fell asleep to and then you're like, what did I fall asleep to? And you're like, oh, I was watching like old retro 90s TV commercials and then you wake up to like a documentary about uh, like d dismantling the monarchy in, in England and shit and it's like <sighs> I can't find the trace so then you hit the back button a bunch of times and you're like how did we get here it's like a fun little adventure for the mornings anyway let's let's get to it <clears throat> so uh, this episode of The Dump is not sponsored by anybody, but it does feature quite a bit of material that has been brought up before the subject material. God, I cannot talk today. You can tell when it's been a minute since I've filmed because nothing comes out of my mouth right unless I've scripted it. I'm sure you can guess I didn't script today's video. So I've been wanting to talk about Colleen Ballinger again for like a hot minute. I didn't Colen vlogs. <laughs> Colen what she deserves honestly. I have obviously spoken about Colleen before and uh, specifically during uh, this past summer when everything went down um, including her career. <laughs> Good one me. Prior to that for whatever reason I watched her vlog channel um, I think because we were pregnant around the same time when she was pregnant with her first son and then she had twins and my pregnancy was with twins so like they were both kind of relevant to me um but I've never been a Miranda Sings person I've never been a 
even her like main channel content is the only real version of her I knew well enough was the vlog version. But as we know, I have covered her return to YouTube. Um, and largely her content since, which I've been watching to kind of see what she's trying to slip in there. You know what I'm saying? Um, it has largely been about rocks. Like, like if you wanted to kill your YouTube channel, right? I want to see her analytics because like her videos look like a setup of like how can I gauge when my subscribers click off my channel? Because this would be a really good way to do that. Because she does like an intro to the vlog and she tells you like what's going on, you know, you put these, there's some shit you're probably gonna see today. And then it's like, I went to the beach and I found rocks and I've been telling, you know, remember those rocks I've been tumbling and oh my God, rocks. And it's like, is this supposed to be interesting to anyone who wasn't like a geologist? And it's so funny to watch like the, and I mean this as respectfully as an adult can say this about likely children. It's interesting to see the sort of like lemming mentality of what's left of her fan base being like, oh my god, rocks, Colleen, I found this rare gemstone while I was scanning the shores of Lake Michigan on a cold December day in hopes that I could send you this message and you would read it aloud as a tortilla talk question on your vlog. I would love to see her analytics because YouTube will tell you like your viewers watch your video for this much. This is when the drop off in this video happens. I bet every single one the drop off starts at the rocks. <laughs> if she was smart she'd put the rock content at the end you know but see then I started thinking about it and I was like okay maybe there's a purpose for that right maybe because she knows that commentators and drama channels and etc are doing exactly what I said I was doing which is kind of scouring it for the information she's hiding in her vlogs right um so it makes sense that she'd be like here's what you're gonna see in this vlog here's the boring rock content to weed out all the people who don't actually give a fuck, now I'm gonna give you the juicy stuff. Unfortunately for her, that doesn't fly because this is 2024, Colleen. We'll skip through the rock content to get the juicy stuff. Thus far, there's been a few things. Her podcast with her husband, Eric, called Relax, is coming back, so. That's cool. That's really cool. Rebuild that career, I guess. It's wild to me that you can be accused of grooming children and mistreating children with copious amounts of proof and then be like, no, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. <laughs> this is still the career for me. The remaining kids will hold me up and cheer me on. Anyway, so there's a couple of her vlogs that I want to talk about today. So that's what we're gonna do. If you watch, you know, drama channels and such and commentary channels, whatever the fuck you want to call them, are we still having that debate whether it's like tea or commentary or whatever? You've seen this stuff, it's not news to you. Um, but I still want to talk about it because this is my channel and I do what the fuck I want, okay? God, back off, mom. The first one I want to talk about is we're not gonna watch these whole videos, we're just gonna watch the interesting parts because I love you and I don't wanna subject, well I don't love you, I don't know who you are, but in theory, in a in a broad sense, I love you. I love that you're here and you're, you haven't left yet. That's cool, good for you. Do you like my setup? Does it look nice? Thank you. Um, so I, at least I like you. I'm not gonna subject you to the rock content because I subjected myself to the rock content to get here and um, I don't wish that for you, okay? I don't, I just don't. First one we're gonna watch a little bit of is called Reflecting on 2023. So, buckle up. Please excuse my appearance. Is, is it different from any other day? Cause it, what's, 
Never mind, I'm not going to be that big of a bitch. It's probably not the best choice to go into a brand new year looking like I do. Again, I don't see the difference. <laughs> but I wanted to post a video for you guys. I didn't want to leave you hanging. And it's probably going to take me a minute to edit like a full-blown vlog because I've just been trying to take it easy. I haven't been like fully vlogging every day recently. Yeah, take it easy. You got a lot going on. Just been enjoying my family and I've been going through some weird like health type things, just lady problems and nothing to be concerned about, I'm totally fine. This is the stuff that I, I despise. And I didn't really notice how much I despised it until post like apocalyptic Ballinger times. But like this whole like, <sighs> I've just been going through this thing, you know, this very vague health thing. It's just, you know, like lady. Lady business. But nothing to be concerned about. Doesn't feel like a ploy for preemptive sympathy even a little bit. Carry on. But I've just been, I've just needed to like take a minute. So that's what I've been doing. But I didn't want to leave y'all empty handed because I'm sure so many of you were just desperate to see my face. <laughs> it's that self deprecating side of Colleen that really shines through in the phoniest of ways. <laughs> She's just like us. I wanted to just say hello and show you a few clips that I have filmed over the past few days. Just cute little moments, but I'm gonna start vlogging again probably pretty soon. That's good. We wouldn't wanna miss out on the exploitation of your three children. Keep it coming. You gotta pay the mortgage somehow. I don't think I'm gonna be vlogging every day like I always have. It's what? what? <laughs> Are you saying that vlogging isn't a sustainable option for you? Just a bit too much, and there's other things that I really wanna do in 2024. Like what? What is it that you're gonna do? Fill out your job application at in and out We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. And so I'm gonna to need to divide my energy between vlogging and sharing my life with you guys and also trying to do some other new things. Not talking shit about children? Not talking shit about your ex? Not abandoning children in strange cities, not sending pornographic material to children and adults for the purposes of mocking another woman. You're gonna try all that this year? Might be good. But I can't believe it's 2024. Holy smokes, goodbye 2023. Oh my God, I'm not gonna get too into it. This I bet you are though. I bet you're gonna get just into it enough. This video is not supposed to be like a recap of my year or whatever, but. Well, um, the title is Reflecting on 2023, so. The fuck it isn't. Like, I think it's safe to say that 2023 was the worst year of my life, but I am so grateful for so many things in 2023, and that's what I wanna focus on. I yeah, totally. Me too. Again, this is not a year recap video. This is literally just a vlog saying, hello, welcome to 2024, and here's some cute clips from the last few days. But it feels weird for my first video of 2024 to like not mention anything about it being a new year last year and all that stuff. So I want to go into 2024 with a positive energy and a motivated, inspired spirit. <laughs> and I want to welcome positivity and kindness and give positivity and kindness. I thought that's what you've been doing. Was that not your, like, slogan? Was that not your greater message? Okay. And in 2024, I want to focus on listening more and being more present in the moment. Okay. Dwelling on things that I have control over and not the things that I do not. I want to focus on creativity and passions and things that make me and my children happy. I don't have any New Year's resolutions. These aren't things that I wrote down in a journal. These are just things I'm word vomiting out onto the internet right now, but things that I know that are important to me. And yes, 2023 was not my favorite year I've ever lived, but I'm grateful for 2023 because I feel like I grew and learned more in the year 2023 than I ever have in any year of my whole life. What did you learn? Did you learn that it's probably a mistake to sing a tongue-in-cheek, passive-aggressive 
bitchy little song in response to serious allegations? Did you learn that apologies are important, but only to Trisha Paytas? Did you learn that as children grow up, they tend to develop critical thinking skills and have realizations about the experiences they had as children? Because you certainly didn't learn how to take accountability in any sense. So I'm just curious about what you did learn and how you did grow because we have yet to receive any sort of examples of any of that. I learned a lot about being a mom. I learned a lot about the internet. I learned a lot about myself and qualities that I don't like about myself. I like which ones? Which qualities? Which qualities? The ones where you're a bad person? I learned things about myself that I do love. I learned that it's better that I'm here on this earth did not listen to me closely <clears throat> i want you to hear the words that i'm saying in no sense of the word do i want anyone to hurt themselves over anything ever okay self-harm and and a attempts to unalive oneself I don't want that for anybody. Shut up. I don't think anyone was like, yeah, dude, I hope Colleen offs herself. I can understand the feeling of that. And I don't doubt that she felt that way. Okay, I don't, I don't because that, as much of a piece of shit as I think she is, she did have her career and her life ripped from underneath her, but for good reason. You know, it's not like she had, she, she made one little oopsie in her past and then, you know, she, the internet came for her and then she, you know, spiraled from there. I, like, she really did have, she, I mean, if there is a vision of, if there's a visual representation of cancellation, I mean, that's it, right? I don't begrudge her for feeling that way. What I do have an issue with is in saying, in the same breath as saying, I learned so much, I grew so much, but I wanted to kill myself and it's important that you know that. Everything she does now feels like a manipulation strategy and it's um, concerning because this is the kind of stuff that we've seen as a pattern that garners her a certain amount of sympathy from her audience, right? And I, I feel like this is a fine line kind of subject, you know? I, I would never ever wish that upon somebody. I would never want somebody to do that, Colleen included, of course. I just think that continuing to tearfully remind the room that she hit a rock bottom emotionally is really, really showing a lack of growth because two things can be true, right? She could have experienced that and made amends, proper amends with the people that she's hurt, with Adam McIntyre, with Becky, with Oliver, with all of them. Not just Trisha, because Trisha has a mouthpiece. I still feel like these um, attempts at reminding everybody that she was in a very low state are manipulative. And I, if that makes me a bitch, I'm sorry, but I do, I really do. I feel, it's hard to feel any other way after seeing kind of the way she's behaved, right? Because if she didn't have this history of manipulative and um, incredibly, I, I feel like this word is kind of diluted now, but like a really toxic behavior, I don't think I would feel that way. But because this is a pattern at this point, it's almost impossible to not feel that way. And for me, you may feel different, but you're wrong. I'm grateful and proud of myself for being here and for doing the fundraiser and for being the best mom that I could possibly be. I learned a lot about trust and friendships and the media. The media? Are we learning about the media? I feel like, I feel, you know, like when you wring out a shirt and you got one hand here, you got one hand here. Colleen's got the twist like right about here. Are we gonna twist it further? And um, I'm probably never gonna believe anything I read or hear in media for the rest of my life. Really? Never? There was a pretty big piece written about you, Miss Colleen Ballinger. And it was very much written in your favor. Are we not to believe that piece of media as well? Is it just the ones that you don't like what they have to say? Or is it all media? I learned so much about rocks <laughs> and I found a new passion when I never knew that I had deep inside of me. When
Even I'm over it. I probably never would have found if I hadn't gone through hard things. I love rocks and crystals and tumbling. You know, I've always my whole life said like, I don't meditate. I don't understand meditation. Meditation's not for me. Therapists have tried to get me to learn how to meditate and I just couldn't figure it out. Is she wearing a feminist shirt? Girl, who are you fooling? <laughs> Bitch, please. I really feel like rocks <laughs> and rock hunting and rock tumbling is my form of meditation. It's something where when I'm doing it, I don't think about anything else. My mind feels clear. I feel calm. I feel grounded. She's about to cry about rocks. This is Colleen's content now. Why am I crying about rocks? I feel one with like the earth and I feel gratitude for being here and I just find beauty and, and metaphors in rocks and in crystals and I'm so grateful for rocks! Yeah, me too. <laughs> and for Taylor Swift. I made new friends and deepened relationships with friends and learned who really loves me and cares about me and oh my god I'm so grateful for those people and that they exist. There can be beauty in hard times. Darkest days I've ever seen in my life were in 2023 and I would not have seen so many beautiful things without those dark times, so I'm grateful for all of it. I don't know, I need to stop rambling. I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm grateful for a lot of things. Okay, I guess since you're grateful, we're gonna let it go and move on in 2024, correct? Oh wait, no, there's another video we need to watch. So this video is from three days ago as of the time I'm filming this. Um, it's called My Big Audition. Um, so prior to her cancellation, if you wanna call it that, before she took her break, if you wanna call it that, uh, Colleen uh, had a video about a big audition that she was going on. I didn't watch it to know if she had explicitly stated what it was for. I don't think so because it seems like she's spending a lot of time clarifying in this video. Um, but I'd like you to hear what she has to say about it because it's, it's worth listening to. Wondering if you'll ever feel comfortable talking about the audition you had before your break. Love you, Colleen. I love you too. And this had a lot of likes. And the reason I chose this comment is because other than the relaxed comments, the other top comment that I get is about my audition. The last vlog that I posted before I took that long break last year was um, me saying, oh, I'm about to go do this big audition. I've been talking about it for like, I think weeks or months, maybe even at that point. And I finally went and I did the audition and that was where we left off. I the audition went really well and um, I was really excited about it. It was an audition for a Broadway show and I got it and we you know, had dates set and I was really excited to um, go do Broadway again. And um, then it didn't happen. And I was, um, Daisy's playing with my rocks. <laughs> Rocks are a family affair. Even the cats like them. Yeah, uh, it didn't work out and I was really uh, sad about that and and I'm not gonna get super into it but like, you know, obviously a lot happened last year. A lot was said last year. I lost that opportunity um, right after a story came out about me that was just completely made up. And Which story was completely made up, Colleen? I'll wait. Anything Adam McIntyre said that he backed up with screenshots proving literally every word out of his mouth? Was it the screenshots and the video recordings Becky shared? I don't know, man. There's a whole lot of um, proof backing up all of the allegations about you, so I would really love to know which one of these stories was just demonstrably false. And it is what it is and, you know, we're moving forward. Are you? Are you moving forward? Are you really? Is this moving forward? Is this what moving forward is? Because I see, as I would see it, <clears throat> moving forward would be taking accountability for the things you've done in specifics, um, apologizing, if not publicly, certainly privately, to the people that you've undeniably hurt, addressing everything head on, and then moving forward. Because you see, Colleen, the thing is, you spent so much time trying to ignore the problem, to make it go away, 
deflect from the problem to make it go away and denying the problem to make it go away and your problem ain't going away baby you think adam's gonna shut the fuck up i i seriously doubt it and here's to him because i hope he never does because the thing is colleen if any of the things that came out about colleen last year came out about me right that I was grooming children, that I stranded a child in a strange city, that I sent pornography to an adult and a child uh, to make fun of someone I, that I considered a friend or considered me a friend. Um, if any of these things, and the myriad things, the whole list, any one of those things came out about me, the first thing I would do is be explaining exactly how untrue that is, if it were actually untrue. You would not be able to get me to shut up about clearing my name from accusations like that. Because see, the reality is your silence and complacency, your deflection and denial tell me nothing that you say has any credibility. You wouldn't be able to stop me from trying to clear my name if any of that was actually untrue. So I'm sorry, I'm not inclined to believe that you lost an opportunity because of an, a uh, a story full of lies. Stay bitter, queen. I already got to do a Broadway show and I'm so grateful for that. What a cool, wonderful, beautiful experience that was for me. I'm so grateful that I ever got to do it because my ultimate dream, if you know me at all. Is hey, Colleen, Daisy's looking a little haggard back there. You might want to go ahead and uh, actually groom those two Persian cats of yours. I was a little girl it was to be on Broadway. That was always my ultimate goal, my ultimate dream, my dream job. And with a lot of hard work and dedication and passion and support from you guys and everything that you have all done to support me over the years, like that dream came true for me. And I was excited to see that dream come true again, but I did already have that dream come true. So like, I'm just grateful that it ever happened at all. But thank you for asking everyone. I, I really appreciate your interest and investment in my life and in my endeavors and things that I share with you. And I shared that audition experience with you guys and that process with you. So I understand why everyone's so interested in what happened there. But um, anyway, um, I'm not gonna sit here and like have a pity party about it. I Okay. Definitely already had a pity party about that one, believe me. And, and now, you know, I'm just trying to look at everything with a different lens and- Me too. Like when you say things like that, like I've already had a pity party about this. That tells your young viewers that everyone who has tried to hold you accountable for the things that you have done, the things that are in black and white, crystal clear, it, it tells me that you're still doing the same shit. You know that's going to incense what's left of your fan base to continue to try to fight off people trying to hold you accountable. Hey, and to my last point, um, where I said, um, you know, I, you wouldn't be able to shut me up if I was being accused of some of these things. I find it very interesting also. The only thing you came out to, de to vehemently deny, or your lawyer did, uh, was about being accused of doing blackface. So you do have it in you to vehemently deny it with facts, right? Just checking in. Anyway, I'm done talking about Colleen for now. She's still on her bullshit, and uh, we'll check in with her in a, in a month or so. We'll go now, take a break, get a snack, because we're going to part two, and it's about Shane Dawson. I told you this is gonna be a long-ass video, so you get a long-ass video. So, it's hot in here. Um, okay, yeah, so it's no, Probably no surprise to anyone that Shane and Ryland um, have had their babies. Um, I did an entire video <laughs> recently, and I feel like a handful of you saw it, uh, because I had it unlisted and I put it in the Shane Dawson um, playlist. There's hair in my shirt. I put it in the Shane Dawson playlist, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to put it out. Just because I, I it felt, it was very unscripted, it felt very disjointed, and I, I don't know, I didn't care for the way I said certain things, and I know I like to be succinct. And if I'm not succinct, I like to be at least incoherent and funny. It was called like my unpopular Shane Dawson opinions. First of all, it felt like an unnecessary video. Second of all, it felt like me um, sort of being an apologist of Shane. Um, because I... <laughs> I made some points about the sort of, um, 
the word I'm looking for? What's the word? The semantics of using the word pedophile to describe someone who is not actively seeking out children for things like that. I just feel like the whole video just felt kind of unnecessary. But most of the video was me saying, I don't like that Shane and Ryland are going to have babies, but they're going to have babies, so all I think we should be wishing is the best for those children. And not the worst for Shane and Ryland, because wishing the worst for Shane and Ryland is wishing the worst for those kids. And those kids don't deserve that. Yeah. Yeah, I can have nuanced opinions. I sat down the day they put up the video called The Birth of Our Sons, and I was ready to tear it to shreds and be like, fuck you two, you don't deserve these kids, you're both irresponsible, Shane is lazy, he has a history of inappropriate behavior with children, this is fucking disgusting, and the video itself was, I'm not gonna lie, kind of sweet. However, my feelings are still the same because I was reminded of this clip. Here's my thing. People have foot fetishes. People have fetishes about, you know, everything. Fine, everybody do your thing. So why is it when somebody looks at a Google's like naked baby on Google and jerks off to it, they can get arrested? Because I don't understand that. So I typed in naked baby. First of all, they were sexy. And like a part of me still feels like Shane is just, ooh, who's she? A part of me just feels like Shane just spent a long time trying to be edgy and failing he was just being disgusting but I don't know, that's a really gross thing to say it's actually pretty interesting because a lot of these videos like these two videos that Ryland has put up since the kids have been born have been a lot of like oh my god look at it on the camera we're gonna have to check the it green? out in sunlight this is my new thing i oh, love green he did just get me a green pottery barn blanket today the usual and then rylan got a sweatsuit kylie expensive rich people things is this a kai sweatsuit rylan seems to be the only one taking care of the kids for the most part I'm currently learning how to do the wrap to wear the babies. Like, I want to make cinnamon rolls in the other room. So if they start fussing or one of them starts fussing, I want to be well equipped on how to wear the boys. Do you really need a hoodie to remember your first Christmas with your children? Okay, so it's this cute uh, Ralph Lauren hoodie with this bear on it. Initial, Shane, y'all, yeah, my initials. And then he goes, turn it around. And I said, <laughs> So you're always having to remember our first Christmas with the babies. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, uh, I straight up don't remember mine. Good idea. Expensive idea. Let the bear thing go, though. And you're probably wondering, where's the blame? None of us have done the dishes for quite a while. Now my mom's left, and she would help us with everything and everything. So the babies and the house. Cups are dirty. I have not washed his bling cup, so he doesn't have access to them. Wow, I look insane. You have not- listen, listen, I am a mother of twins, okay? I will not- I will shout that from the fucking rooftops. I have done it myself, by myself. It is hard. All day, all night, for like the first at least 30 years. I get it, okay? In every clip, these babies are asleep, okay? Which happens. During the day, they sleep a lot of the time. Everybody falls behind on their dishes, everybody falls behind on everything. That is- Super normal. Super, super fucking normal. Um, I don't begrudge them for that. I do begrudge the verbiage of, I haven't cleaned his bling cups yet, so they're not clean. He's literally sitting in a chair in the corner, pretending to be the fucking Queen of England, fucking sipping some coffee. Now everybody's entitled to a break, especially when you've got new babies in the house. 100%. But like, let's not make a spectacle of this, okay? The only thing I really want to say is that I genuinely don't like Shane Dawson, but I also genuinely wish them the best with the kiddos because like I said, wishing anything else is just wishing poorly on two innocent babies. Turn around, clap your hands, touch your own butt, and we'll be back in a minute. 
Okay, the third and final thing I want to talk today about was a little bit about Gypsy Rose Blanchard because people have opinions on this girl. I have some conflicting opinions on this girl and you can let me know what you think down below or you could not. You can just fuck up. If you live under a literal rock, Gypsy Rose Blanchard was serving a 10 year prison sentence of which she served eight, I believe, for the murder of her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, who basically held her prisoner her whole life. Um, she's the reason most people know the term Munchausen by proxy. The fella who committed the actual crime is serving, I believe, life in prison without possibility of parole. And uh, that's where we are. So uh, leading up to Gypsy Rose's release from prison, everybody was yes. cleaning the fuck out of everything and ready to welcome the now 30-something year old Gypsy Rose uh, into the year 2024 with open arms. And wow, she sure is here. She married a man who looks suspiciously like her mother. I am not convinced it is not the ghost of Dee Dee Blanchard stacked on two small children inside a trench coat. We have learned about the fact that their, their sex life is apparently really good. Mama got that D. She's been on kind of like a press tour lately. Uh, she was on The View. She's been on other things. Now a lot of people have criticized her for basically going like the influencer route, which I think is not the worst thing ever um, because she can be an advocate and uh, do some real good with that. But also she's technically a felon and that limits her job prospects quite a bit. So I um, I don't know that it would have been easy for her to like reacclimate into like a nine to five, you know what I'm saying? People have an issue with the way she speaks about the young man who is serving the rest of his life in prison, um, you know, where she's, she's basically saying like, I've made peace with the fact that he's spending the rest of his life in prison because of me, because he had some sort of fantasy about all the things he did and people have a problem with that like it's a justification like she's absolving herself in a way i just think it's really interesting i think our our views as a society on like i don't like true crime i think as a society we forget the true part of true crime and that these are real people who have experienced very real things and uh it's important that we remember that because it's not, life isn't a fucking movie, man. But this is life. This isn't a movie. Sure it is, Sid. I mean, it is, but it isn't, you know? It's all a movie. It's all one great big movie. So I don't, I guess I really don't have opinions on Gypsy Rose. I, I think she should just do life and uh, just go home to your mother, husband, and have a bitch in time. I... It is what it is. It's really hot in here. I feel like this is, this is the end. Sorry, this video is way longer than I thought it was gonna be. I, apparently I had way more to say than, than I even I knew. If you like this multi-subject video, let me know down below, or if you prefer sort of the long form one subjects, uh, that's cool too. Um, just let me know what you think in the comments. Like I said, oh my God, can you follow one fucking direction? Anyway, I'm gonna go film some more videos. This has been the dump I hope it was a good dump for you. Subscribe if you if you want to. Uh, thank you to my patrons, especially who are lovely. The link to join my Patreon is below. Feel free to join. Feel free to not. Feel free to fuck off. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Stay tuned for the outtakes if there are any. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hey girlies, I just realized I completely neglected to give you my um, new setup tour. So let's do that. It's gonna be something here, although it might be over here. There's my empty coffee. My AirPods, it's a steak because I have some incredible friends. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on here to be honest. Just like trinkets. This is like a best friend pig thing that I have with my best friend.
of like 30 years. That's a, st a strawberry with a fake fucking uh, succulent in it. Boris, it's a tiny terracotta pot with a tea light. That is the microphone I use to record the podcast that Naley and I do and may do again one day. Some of my fave books because I'm an into fucking lectual. Um, actually, these ones are, these were my grandmother's. I've literally never read this book. I did read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn enough to write a book report on it in junior high and get like A++ on it. Um, I really feel like it was one of those moments where I was like, there was a tree and it grew in Brooklyn and there was a girl and she lived in Brooklyn where the tree was, you know, you know that kind of thing. I haven't read Diary of an Oxygen Thief yet. Um, it's on my to-do list. The Fran Leibowitz Reader, always a classic. I recommend Death by Zamboni to anyone who likes a good, funny, ridiculous book. It could be a meme in and of itself. I kind of want to read it again. I know everybody has conflicting opinions about The Catcher in the Rye. I get it, but it's an old version and I liked it. I'm a big Bradbury fan, so I've got old editions of Dandelion Wine and Fahrenheit 451 over here. My favorite Augustine Burroughs book, Running with Scissors. If you've never read it, you should read it. The Portable Dorothy Parker is my favorite book in the world. It is a collection of essays and short stories and poems by, yes, Dorothy Parker. The Hollow Earth is the only conspiracy theory that tickles that part of my brain that conspiracy theories are supposed to. Martin Short, I must say, speaks for itself. Chicken Soup with Rice, which is this tiny little book up here, is written by the same guy who did Where the Wild Things Are, and this was a book my dad and I used to read when I was little. Fresh Balsam, because it's always Christmas here. Here on my shelves, I've got pens and pencils and markers and things that might get changed out. My vlog camera, my Instax, and up here is some art. I've got my Mario on canvas and Sydney Prescott print as well. Anyway, that was my tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, okay, bye. Face tracking down on the farm. Uh, you know, you live in a four season climate. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. If I had gone to New York and moved there and lived there for a while, like, that was the same time frame where I was getting really into rocks, guys. So, Broadway, rocks. I don't know. You know? Like, what? would have never gotten into rocks, maybe, so. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.